Hi, welcome to Tuts Plus. My name is Bob Flisser. I'm sure you know how to do a basic web search, but if you want to narrow down your results, there are a few techniques that most search engines will let you do. And Google, and to a lesser extent Bing, has some undocumented features that can really help you target what you want. The first tip I'll tell you is that you should probably choose your web browser to match your search engine. And what I mean is this. Right now, I have Google Chrome open on my screen, and Google Chrome, not surprisingly, makes it easier to search Google. And the reason is that I don't have to go to Google's homepage and click in the search box to do the search. I can click up here in the address bar. And in fact, Chrome doesn't even call this the address bar anymore. They call it the Omni box because you could type a URL in this box, but you could also search in here. The same thing holds true with Internet Explorer. Now here's a blank page of Microsoft Internet Explorer. If I do my search up here in the address bar, not surprisingly, Internet Explorer is going to search Microsoft Bing. Now those are just the defaults, and yes, you can change the default search engines in your web browser, but that's beyond the scope of this tutorial. I'll come back to Internet Explorer. Let's go back to Chrome first. The first thing I really want to show you is what's called an OR search. What an OR search does is you tell the search engine, I want to find this, or I want to find something else. Usually search engines will give you results where all of the things that you type in are found. So let's say, for example, and I'm going to use quotation marks because when you use quotation marks, that tells the search engine that you want to find exactly what you're typing in. So let's say if I search for Doctor Who or, and you got to type that in capital letters, or Sherlock Holmes, and that's in quotes. Now this is going to find every page that has the exact phrase Doctor Who, or it has the exact phrase Sherlock Holmes. And I can scroll down and I can see a whole bunch of results there. Another bit of punctuation is parenthesis. And when you put your search terms in parenthesis, search engines tend to treat it as a unit. So let's do this. I'll go in here and I'm going to put this whole phrase inside a set of parentheses space. And now I'm going to open up another set of parentheses. And in here, I'm going to put in quotes, Matt Smith and nothing, no, or no, nothing. And then just another quote, Stephen Moffat and the parenthesis and Enter and do the search. And what this is telling Google is it's saying find pages that have either the phrase Doctor Who or the phrase Sherlock Holmes. And in addition to one of those, find the pages that have actor Matt Smith and producer Stephen Moffat. Now, you might be familiar if you've used search engines for a while, or if you're familiar with databases, what's called a not search, where you might be able to say find pages that have this stuff, but that do not have this stuff. And you used to be able to use the word not or a minus sign. Well, that doesn't work anymore. And the interesting thing is Google still has that in the documentation, but Google and Bing and Yahoo just completely ignore the not operator. Now, another cool trick is to search within a specific site. This time, rather than using this bar here, I'll show you what I mean by the Omnibox. I'm just going to click up there in the address bar. I'm just going to delete. And I'm going to search for, and I'll put in quotes, name of actor, Peter Capaldi, and I'm going to put in the keyword site, and that site with a colon after it, and the site I want to search is bbcamerica.com. So what this is doing, this is finding every instance of the name of actor Peter Capaldi, but just in the website of bbcamerica.com, and you can see that here in the results. So this is great, let's say, if you're at a website that doesn't have its own built-in search feature, or maybe you don't like the results of the search feature. You could also use that site keyword for top-level domains. Top-level domains are things like the .com or .org part of an address. So again, let's just delete what's in there. Let's say maybe you want a phishing license. So I'm going to put phishing license in quotes, site, colon, and then I'm going to put dot gov because it's usually one government agency or another that issues phishing licenses when I press enter. Now I can see all of these places from New York, New Jersey, Maryland, whatever, that issue phishing licenses. Another keyword I really like is what's called a wildcard. And you might be familiar with wildcards from elsewhere in your computer experience. And 
just like that, you can use an asterisk. So let's just delete what's there in that Omnibox. And I'm going to search for the three asterisk. And now it finds the three stooges, the three doctors, the three musketeers, the three muses. I'm sure the three tenors are in there somewhere. So that's really nice. Now, you could also search for number wildcards. For example, let's say maybe you're in the market for a tablet. Maybe let's say an Android tablet and you have a budget of let's say, 300 to $600. Well, how do you do the search? Say, Android tablet, and then you put the lower number, let's say 300, two dots, two periods, and then the upper number, and I'll put 600. And if you're doing this in dollars or pounds sterling or yen, whatever, it's fine, it works the same way. And now we can see here, this is going to show us results for Android tablets between 300 and and $600. I think that's pretty neat. Now, I mentioned Microsoft Bing, so let me just show you that a few of these things work here. I'm back here in a default blank Bing page, and I'll click up here in the address bar. And I'm going to run the same exact search. Maybe I'll just search for a different name. I'll search for David Tennant and also site colon bbcamerica.com. And here, the same thing, all references to actor David Tennant. And you can see these are all in the website of bbcamerica.com. There are also some great keywords of what I think of as connectivity searches. For example, let's say you want to find all sites that link to a particular site. So let's go up here. And I'm going to use the link keyword. So that's link, colon. By the way, all of these keywords, you have to follow them with a colon. So I'm going to look for link, colon, amazon.com. And now I can see all of the pages that are linked to Amazon.com. As you can imagine, there's a lot of them. You could also find pages that are related to a specific site. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to replace the word link with the keyword related. And now these are pages that are websites that are somehow related to Amazon.com. And you can see they're basically online retailers. Now, who is it to say what constitutes as being related and what doesn't? Well, who knows? That's just proprietary algorithm of the web search provider. Now, let's say you're at a website and you know you're at the website you want, but maybe an article that's on there that you expect to see isn't there. You could search a cached version of the site. And here's what I mean. Let's get rid of that. And I'm going to use the keyword cache. And let's look at computers.tutsplus.com. And you can see it even tells you this is Google's cache of that page. So here is what the page looked like the last time Google crawled it. Oh, there's an interesting article by somebody. Generally, sites that tend to change often get crawled a lot more often. Now, rather than having to remember all of these connectivity keywords, there's one mother of all keywords that kind of does all of the above, and that's the info keyword. So let's just get rid of that. And I'm going to run info on the same Tuts Plus site. So I'll say info colon computers.tutsplus.com. And this gives me a clickable list of the keywords that I just did. So I don't have to remember all of them. Now, those keywords were all documented, but here are a few keywords that are not documented. I think you're going to like these. Let's say, for example, you want to do a search for phrases that are just in the title of a web page. When I say the title, I mean in the HTML title tag, which usually shows up here in the tab of a web browser. So let's get rid of that. And since I was just searching for Android, let's just continue with that example. I'll say in title, colon, Android and iOS. Maybe you want to buy a tablet and you're not sure if you want an Android tablet or an Apple tablet. And this will show you all instances where the word Android and the word iOS is in the title of the web page. And you can see all this is basically comparisons between Android and iOS. What if you want to find the same keywords, but rather than in the title of the page, you want it actually in the text, then instead of the in title keyword, you can say in text. You might find a number of these results are the same, but again, you can see each one has the word Android and the word iOS. You could get even more specific. What if you want to find these words in the actual URL, in the actual web address? Then instead of in text or in title, you can say in URL. And now if we take a look at the actual URL, you can see each one 
has the words Android and iOS somewhere there in the web address. Google also has some related keywords specifically for searching blogs, and you can see them here. Now, let's say you want to find a downloadable file of a specific type. For example, maybe you want a sample expense sheet and you want it in Excel format. Now, yes, Excel does have templates, but maybe you don't want to use any of those. What you can do is this. Let's again get rid of all of that. And the way you do it is, let's say again, I'll look for, I'll say expense sheet. And to find Excel format, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the keyword file type colon, and no dot, just the extension, XLSX. And now you can see these are all expense sheets, all in Excel format. Now, some may be XLSX, some may be in the older XLS format, and you could do this with other formats. Most of the Microsoft and Adobe file formats and image formats are supported. What about the weather? Well, one of my favorite sites is weather.com, but you don't always have to do that. So maybe go in here this time. I'm going to search for weather and then put in zip code or postal code. So I'm going to put in 08822, and it tells me here's what the weather is going to be like in Flemington, New Jersey. Well, nice day today, rain the rest of the week. Oh, well. Now, you could also get dictionary definitions. Another favorite site of mine is dictionary.com, but I don't have to go there. Let's just delete that, and I'll use the keyword define colon solenoid. What is a solenoid? And it tells me what that is. It's basically the heart of an electric motor. You notice this little speaker icon. We could even hear it pronounced. Solenoid. But wait, there's more. You could also use Google and Bing as a calculator. I'll just say some number times. I'll just use an asterisk, some other number, press enter. And it gives me the result. And it also gives me a calculator. And I can click the numbers here, or I could just use the numbers on my keyboard. And I could do all kinds of things. Let's say I want the natural log of some number and enter, and there it gives it to me. Let me just show you this in Bing. And in Bing, I'll just do some basic arithmetic here. And also it gives me calculator. It works pretty much the same way. Now, in addition to a regular calculator, there's also a conversion calculator. Let's say, for example, I'm doing a recipe and I need to convert from imperial units to metric units, and I want to know how many cups are so number of milliliters. So what I could do is this. For example, let me just start off with a search, and I'll say something like three cups in ml, and it tells me that three cups are just about 710 milliliters. And you notice these little drop downs here. I can change the units. Maybe I want to know how many cups are so many imperial quarts, or I can change the same here. And not just volume, this drop down will let me convert all sorts of things. Let's say length, for example. And I want to know, let's say I have to drive, somebody tells me to drive 20 kilometers, and I want to know how many miles that is. And I know 20 kilometers, it's about 12 and a half miles. Now, Google will convert not just units, it will convert words. You could always go to something like Google Translation or freetranslation.com, but you could do your translation right up here where you do the search. For example, if it's windy today and I want to know what is the Spanish word for wind, and I say wind in Spanish, it tells me viento is the Spanish word for wind. Translating from a foreign language back into English requires one extra keyword. You generally have to specify what is the foreign language. So, for example, let's say somebody gives me some really yummy French cheese and they tell me it's très génial. I might say French génial in English. See, it's even guessing for me already. And I know that cheese is awesome. Now, génial in French does mean awesome. Sometimes it gives you a little bit of a weird translation there. Speak of traveling, let's say you want to find arrival or departure information for a particular flight. Just type in the airline and the flight number. So let's say I want to find what's happening with United Flight, let's say, 1002. And I can see it is actually en route, not quite halfway, between Houston and Boston. Bing will give you pretty much the same results, but without the actual transit little bar here. 
it'll tell you departure and arrival information, but you won't know exactly how far along the path it is. Google will also let you search databases other than its own. For example, let's say you want package tracking information from UPS or FedEx. Maybe you're looking for the ISBN of a particular book. So you can find zip code and postal codes, everything you see here. This is really cool. Let me show you a patent number search. I have a little electronic memo pad on my desk that a friend gave to me as a gift. And I see it has a certain patent number on it. So I'll just search for patents. All I have to do is put in the keyword patent and then the number. And then it tells me storage array and grayscale, whatever, liquid crystal writing. That's basically what the thing is. Now, maybe after you're doing all of these searches, you're just kind of done with planet Earth and maybe you want to search Mars. This isn't as much a search keyword as it is a feature, but I'll just go here to google.com slash Mars. And now I can search the planet Mars and I can kind of drag around on the surface here. And you might be wondering, hey, what's with all the colors? This is elevation and topographical information. You can see over here the scale, different colors mean different heights, darker colors mean higher. If you want to see what it actually looks like, you could go here to visible. So it's kind of hard to see the height here. And if you go to infrared, this will give you an infrared view of the Martian surface. And you could zoom in, you can zoom out. And if you want, you could search Mars. You could click over here and search Mars with Google Earth. Sounds like a contradiction in terms, but it actually works. And finally, once you've conquered Earth and you've conquered Mars, maybe you want to try your hand at Klingon. And if you go to this address here, you could actually run Google in Klingon. Maybe someone had a little too much time on their hands. But anyway, I hope you found this tutorial helpful. And if you liked it, you could search Tuts Plus for more of my tutorials. Again, I'm Bob Flisser, and as they say in Klingon, kapla.